With your ripping done and your cross cutting done on your pieces for your box, now we can start cutting the joinery for the box. So today, we're gonna talk about cutting rabbits. No, not that kind of rabbit. Remember, rabbits are just wood joints. So a rabbit is kind of like a date or a groove, but it's on the edge of the piece. So if you look at the box that, uh, you know, the boxes around the shop, it is just a notch cut made into one of the pieces of plywood to accept the other piece of plywood. It's a very simple joint. I don't think it makes things a lot stronger. It's, it's not a, a really strong construction joint, but it really aids in assembling pieces because there's a place for them to you know, interlock together. It gives you a little more gluing surface, which is nice. And in our case, it's going to allow us to get rid of some of that end grain that we don't want to see from the plywood because I mean, all those interior plies are just softwoods and they're not really, really nice looking, especially if you have like all three layers. So by getting rid of some of them in a rabbit, we won't have as much end grain showing anymore. Okay, so since it's Amish Thursday, we're gonna make our first rabbit um, by hand. So looking at the pieces that you have lined up for your blocks, you've got them all numbers matching and the grain wraps around the blocks as, as much as you can, three is to three, like is seen here, and so on. Um, remember, this is gonna be the outside of my box. And so all your rabbits have to be made on the inside of the material. So just remember that if you're making rabbits, it better be on the inside of your material. No rabbits on the outside of the box. So now where will the rabbits be located? So in a box like this, this being the front, you wouldn't want any uh, end grain showing on the front of the box. So make sure that your front is overlapping your side, not your side overlapping your front. If this is the case, then we'll be making the rabbit into the front piece like so to accept the side piece. You can come over here, Talia, if you want to help me out. So there'll be a rabbit here. That means there'll be rabbits in all four corners or on the short sides of the long pieces. Then, so that'll make four rabbits. The other thing we need rabbits for is to accept the top of the box and the bottom of the box. So that will give rabbits on the full perimeter of the top and the full perimeter of the bottom. So if we kind of individualize the pieces here, if you look at your front piece here, now I had this wrong, this is the inside of my box. Uh, you're gonna need rabbits along the sides, here and here. And you're gonna need rabbits at the top and the bottom to accept the, the top and bottom of the box. Now, just to be clear, in case you haven't got it yet, we're gonna make a box without a lid. So the lid of the box is gonna be cut off later on the table saw. We're not going to make a separate lid. So if you're confused about like, why are we gluing and encasing this whole thing together? Well, that's exactly what you do. The box, Tally, can you come here? Come up here. So the box is made as one piece and then we take it to the table saw, it's a kind of a scary day and we cut off the lid right on the table saw. So this gets cut off after the box is enclosed, just to clear things up. Okay, so we've got four rabbits on the inside of this piece. On a side piece, you're only gonna have rabbits at the top and the bottom because the sides here, this will be square stock that fits into a rabbit on the front or the back piece. So this piece here will only get a rabbit along the green at the top and along the green at the bottom. If you find yourself laying out a rabbit across the green, you know you've made a mistake, okay? So in total, that will be, you know, two rabbits on these short pieces, so two and four, and then another four and four, so eight plus four will be 12. You should have 12 rabbits all together when you're done. So the first rabbit that you cut, now being such a simple wood joint, there is a bow well, 12 different ways we cut this rabbit, maybe even more. So we're gonna start laying out this rabbit. So our first cut's gonna be the simplest one, just with hand tools, just showing you that you can use all kinds of things around the shop, um, simple things to help you cut this. So I'm gonna really make this, I guess, simplify this as, as much as I can. So this being the inside of the box, um, I'm going to make a wood joint 
that accepts this piece of wood just like so. So what I do is I'm going to trace the width of this piece and I'm going to give it like a fingernail thickness because the worst situation would be on a rabbit with veneer plywood is that this piece would stick out like so. That's because you cannot sand this flush because this is that paper thin veneer on the outside and if you sand it at all it'll get really ugly. So you want to you know get flush would be perfect but just to be safe we're going to give it like a fingernail thickness on the outside there and so I'm going to trace the width of that piece that way. Now once I have that oh look at that I had, it's perfect to what I had before. Um, so that mark being right here remember this line was just made by me doing that and I just got lucky. Um, with that one mark I'm not going to square it the whole way. Why? Because I have a square piece of plywood that I, I know was square from yesterday um, after my cross cutting and I'm just going to take that piece and use it as a fence for my cut. So there make sure the piece is nice and square and it's going to act like a fence when I cut this. So I have a couple clamps here. I'm just going to clamp it to my table. So off the edge of your table. Like so. Okay, so now this is going to be the width of my rabbit. What about the depth of my rabbit? Well, it's kind of your choice, but, well, not your, I'm not going to let it be your choice. In, in real life, you never want to go more than halfway. We're going to go exactly a third, really because we've got veneer plywood, and that's where the veneer is split. So I'm going to be cutting a rabbit that goes through the first of the three, I guess, uh, cross bands in the plywood that deep. So just you'll have to be watching it from side to side that you've gone the right depth. So with it there, take your saw and use the other piece of wood as a fence, as a guide. I'm just going to move this out a little more for myself. Don't hit my knuckles. Okay. And you're going to just guide that saw. Got a little kerf made and this saw is about as dull as they come. In fact, I think it's so dull. I'm gonna switch my saws here. I got a little gent saw here. All right, so as you cut, keep watching the front and the back to make sure you don't cut too deep. You're looking to get to that first layer of the plywood, like so. Get there. You can almost hear the sound change as you get through uh, that cross band because the grain direction will have changed from, you know, northwest or north south to east west when you get through okay so you've cut the depth how are you going to peel that thing out well if you've got a good sharp chisel you should be able to split that right where you want to so with the chisel with the bevel up try to place it right on the you know separation of the layers there for the cross bands and you hope that it's going to split out for you now, take it easy. Might not go as perfect for you as you want. But remember, this is just the first of the 12 ways we're gonna cut rabbits. So you gotta get a little bit of practice with all of them. You can grab it when I'm done. There it is. Now, this is a little bit of a special situation because we're using this veneer plywood. So, it comes out, you can see kind of where it splits. Now, hopefully it splits well for you. It may not be the most beautiful thing as say we did on a table saw, but it'll be fine because it's going to get, it's a joint. 
so it's going to be hidden with another piece of plywood so there simple rabbit cut with very simple tools a back saw and a chisel and what should be if i get my numbers matching here i won't worry about numbers matching yet i guess is that <clears throat> i should be able to fit these two together and one way or deep and if anything it's flush or sticking in or the sorry the end grain is sticking out just a hair okay so that's your first rabbit that's one way you gotta learn to cut a rabbit i'm only gonna go through two more today and then i'll do the rest tomorrow um so again from kind of simplest to kind of better ways to cut rabbit with better tools uh the next thing that you could cut a rabbit with that would you know next on the list would be kind of to use like utilize your table saw <clears throat> so if you notice first rabbit i cut you know this would be the hardest way to cut a rabbit so i did it on the short side of the piece i didn't want to do that difficult way on the long side so now we can set up <clears throat> it's on the table saw all right so what's going to happen here is whenever i set up a table saw i always set the depth first so it's easier to set the depth and have that ready to go. And so if you remember, if I was cutting all my rabbits here, um, sorry, if I remember, I don't know what I was going to say, but, oh, I know. You're going to go through uh, one of the three layers. So the first thing you're going to do is pick a tooth that's at the top and set it so that it's going through just one of those three cross bands. Okay, that looks pretty close. Now you can always raise the blade, so if anything, set it low, and you can raise the blade after. So after you've got the blade set to height, uh, you can take your fence, and you're gonna set it to, again, if you remember, the width of the rabbit is gonna be the thickness of the piece of plywood that comes into it. So that's the distance that you're gonna want your fence away. Now don't make the mistake of thinking that you want that half inch between the fence and the blade. No, you're gonna include the blade, so you need to have that half inch to the outside of the blade. And just like we said before, it'd be nice to have like a fingernail thickness of blade showing. Um, fingernail thickness just sticking out a little bit, so you're just a little bit wider. Now, because you've already cut a rabbit, it would only make sense that you compare what you're gonna cut to the rabbit that you've already made so you need all your rabbits to be the same you spend so much time making your piece of plywood the exact same size so i'm just going to adjust that fence just so it's set up to this rabbit okay so now i'm going to make another rabbit on another piece remember i've got four to make on this one and i've got two to make on this one so i can really make my, my choice here i'm going to start just by making a single cut on so, again, I got my inside of my box down. Uh, <clears throat> pressure down is going to be really important. Because blade height is important, you're going to want to have, have a pressure above the blade at all times. Okay, pressure against the fence. Okay, when you pull it out, you should see that your blade height was the same as the, the depth of the wrap in the last one. And I don't think it's quite there, so I think i got to raise my blade. Okay, that looks really close. So my second rabbit would be this single table saw score or kerf, and then I could chisel this back out if I wanted to. Look, I caught myself with a chisel there before. Be careful with the chisel. Uh, chisel that, oh. Now, if you were talking to anybody about how they make a rabbit with a table saw, it's not usually with plywood, and they would make it by making the same cut that we just made and then they would adjust their table saw and they would make a second cut with a piece up like this to cut out the piece of material. And so in two slices, they could make that rabbit cut. Um, because the plywood we have, some of it is gonna be really bold. It's gonna be hard to keep the material against the fence. You could utilize a, like a feather board of some sort to keep it tight against the fence, uh, but we're gonna avoid that. And I'm gonna show you a different process. So 
Again, you can chisel this out. Then the third thing I want you to do is, using that table saw setup, we're gonna make a rabbit. By making that same single score that we did, remember pressure down would be important. And then we're gonna be, do something that I tell you never to do, and that's let your material come away from the fence. But with the situation that we have now here, there's really no kickback situation. We're not gonna get the material thrown back at us by cutting this little uh, kerf and our material away from the fence. So with your second and third passes, you're just gonna move your material further and further away from the fence until you take out all the rabbit material. So second pass, I'm just gonna judge this space. Okay, in the interest of time, um, I could clean this out now if I want, uh, just with a chisel or a chisel would probably be the best way. So you can see that my depth is really good. The depth lines up from rabbit to rabbit. Uh, and then I could chisel this one out and I'd have three rabbits done. Now, as you're probably thinking, these are a terrible way to cut rabbits. And you're not wrong. Of all the ways you could cut rabbits, these are probably the most painstaking and hardest to keep like um, uniform uh, and such. So you're hoping to move on from this. So we will move on from this tomorrow. Uh, the ways that we can cut a rabbit that would be better uh, would be with a dado stack. And uh, we've done this with the school, at the school for, for grooves. So we'll stack the dado blade tomorrow to make a rabbit. And then I'll show you how you can make a rabbit on the jointer with the rabbiting table. And then best of all that you're probably gonna like the best, well, besides maybe the dado blade, the dado stack, is the router table. The router table makes a really uh, quick, clean rabbit in one setup. Um, I'm, gonna pro I'm prolonging this obviously because if, you set if we set up the router table or the dado stack, we could all make our rabbits in a nice assembly line fashion and have all our rabbits done in a couple minutes. But again, this product is for learning, so I wanna show you all the different ways you can utilize tools from the shop. When I get back, I'll show you uh, how to use, use a portable circular saw to cut rabbits and how to use a handheld router to cut rabbits, so yeah, lots of ways to do it. So good luck with the uh, back saw and the chisel, the single saw kerf and the chisel, and the multiple passes on a single blade. The three first ways you're gonna cut a rabbit. Love it.